I've been a fan of Blackthorn Prod for quite some time. So when the game jam came about, I thought, well, sure, why not? Let's get in and give it a go. I mean, I just finished hosting my own jam, so the next natural thing would obviously be to take part in another one. This is an event in which game developers from all over the world are challenged to make a game in one week. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Welcome to the theme reveal video for the third Blackthorn Prod game jam. Less is more. <laughs> what? That was the exact same theme that I used. I'm not even joking. Less than a few days prior to the theme reveal, less is more. What's going on? Is somebody stealing from me? Is Blackthorn Prod a secret fan of Zadderwood? Probably not. Nope. I'm going to chalk it up to a massive coincidence. Anyway, with the theme out of the way, I set about coming up with some ideas for a less is more style game, which was surprisingly hard considering I just hosted a game jam with the theme less is more and sat through 22 games all under that theme, yet I still couldn't think of anything. So the theme was revealed Saturday morning. My work for Saturday included, but then on Sunday I got straight to and then on Monday, I managed to finally come up with an idea using physics. I've always wanted to make a physics-based game, and when I took part in the Mini Jam 62 Colors Game Jam, I submitted a game called Color Bubble. This game had a physics element where little cubes would fall out of balls in the sky, which would then help you lower a bridge to go through a door. This was about as much as I played around with the physics mechanic in Construct. So I wanted to make a game in this jam that used more of those physics elements so I could really kind of get a, an understanding and work with the physics that the engine had to offer. So I knew that I wanted to use physics but I had no idea how I could translate that into a less is more style game. So I kept thinking and then one idea popped into my head after watching a bit of sport on TV was golf. The whole premise of golf is based around less is more. The less strokes you take to get a ball in a hole the better you do and the higher you score. So I decided to run with it. But golf by itself would have been a little bit boring, I think, in terms of originality. So I wanted to put a spin on it. I started playing around with some artwork in Construct and designed a ball, which immediately made me think of pinball. So there I had it, my two games that I was gonna to mix together to make one game. It's almost like I should be taking part in a different game jam. It was now Tuesday, and I was just getting started on my game which left me just a few days before the deadline. So I said goodbye to the family and locked myself in the bedroom, hell bent on finishing this game as quickly as I possibly could. Luckily for me, Construct 3 allows me to work really quickly, so I was able to get the first couple of levels done with the mechanics in place pretty soon. I have a few projects on the go at the moment, and because of that, my dad, who works with music and sound and has his own recording studio in his bedroom, is constantly making music for me. Luckily, he had already made a few tracks recently and sent them over, so I used that as the background music. I downloaded the Essential Retro Video Game Sound Effects Collection by Juhani Junkala. Because this was a golf slash pinball game, I knew that I wanted to have nine levels to represent the front nine in a typical golf match. All I had to do was duplicate the layers one by one, move the borders and boundaries around, and I was good to go. However, just having different layouts wasn't going to be enough. That wasn't going to make for a fun game. So I needed to add in some traps and hazards like a typical golf course would have, such as the sand trap, the water hazard, that kind of thing. But because it was a video game and it had a kind of element of pinball to it, I wanted to make the traps and the obstacles a little more fun. I knew that I wanted to have some kind of mechanic with wind that would blow the ball about. So I added a particle effect that would represent a blowing breeze. Then I added in some hands that would grab the ball if you got too close to it, holding onto you for a few seconds before letting go. This would slow your time down, and obviously time was a factor in completing the level to get a higher score. Marlin recently did a tutorial on how to make a cool water effect, so I stole it. 
Thanks Marlin. Once I had all the traps done, I needed to make sure that they affected the ball in the right way when the ball would come into contact with them. So I set about tweaking the properties in terms of the density, friction, elasticity, linear dampening and angular dampening. I knew when the ball was in the water that I wanted, to, I wanted it to spin around really quickly when you're trying to click it. Similarly, if you drop something in the bath and tried to pick it up, it would be slipping out of your fingers. So for that, I just reduced the angular dampening down to zero. Once I got the ball to a state that I was happy with, where the elements in the game would affect it based on whether you came into contact with them, I then decided to make the game even more complicated. So I added multiple balls. I wanted each ball to behave differently when you clicked on it. So for example, a lead ball would be very heavy, a rubber ball would bounce off of the walls, and the speed ball would just go much faster. And I wanted each of them to be useful in their own way when going through the level. So I added a pause menu that allowed you to switch between the balls. And as I did with the original ball, I tweaked the physics settings on each of these other balls to get the effect I wanted when you clicked it. So for example, with the lead ball, I increased the density. With the rubber ball, I increased the elasticity. And with the speed ball, I decreased the friction. Once the game was finished, I threw it over to my Discord to see if anybody wanted to play test it. So thanks to Blank Dev and Wadeep for providing some useful feedback. I got the game submitted and uploaded to Itch even though I started three days late, which was amazing because I really didn't think I'd have that much time to work on it. But thanks to some good old fashioned neglect of the family, ignoring of the children and generally just avoiding all household duties and chores, I managed to get this game submitted in time and leave myself enough time to create this devlog on how I made it. So if you want to head on over to my Itch page and check it out, it's ready to roll, no pun intended, in all of its glory. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.